welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, um, Zhen Dao Yes Jen. Uh, Professor Jen Simpson have just mentioned that uh, I'm, I'm the convener of the Master of Translation. And uh, our procedure today is I will be talking about must provide an overview of the Master of Translation and answer any questions you have. And then we will move on to the general and Master of General and Applied Linguistics. So good evening and welcome to ANU. First, I want to um, highlight the importance of translation, especially at a time when we are all together facing existential crisis on all levels. These crises require global collaborative efforts that cross language barriers. Here we are talking about accessibilities, for example, to information which can save people's lives. For us as one to share our experiences, stories and ideas, and ultimately to achieve cross-cultural understanding, we need translators. I can't emphasize more how important translation is to our humanity as one. I'm very proud to say that our students work with a range, a wide range of uh, languages. And in doing so, they're also making an effort towards cross-cultural understanding. Currently, our students are working with the translation between English and Arabic, Chinese, French, Japanese, and Spanish. And last semester, we had graduates working with literary Chinese or classical Chinese, Indonesian, and Thai. Our domestic students um, currently in the program are recent graduates um, who have obtained their undergraduate degrees in, in, um, in English, in a particular language, in creative writing, in science, in chemistry, for example, and in education, and then coming, they come, or in law, they come from a very diverse background. And what they share is that they have obtained a language major or a diploma of languages. Our alumni include in, in master, our previous master, of, former master of translation students include now public servants, they work in public service and in, they work in publishing area such as an acquisitional editor uh, in publishing houses. Um, they work as professional translators, and some of them also manage in international projects. And one of uh, a few students also work as instructors in translation programs. And of course, we have had students who progressed on to advance the master of translation and then to uh, pursue a um, PhD in, the, in, 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 in translation or in um, language studies in general. Why come to ANU to study um, and to, to study a master of translation? Because ANU is home to a team of world renowned intercultural and language specialists who are also experienced translators. And ANU offers the greatest variety of specialized language expertise available in Australia. Here is a sample of languages available at ANU from Arabic, ancient Greek, Burmese, Chinese, French, German, Hindi, Indonesian, Italian to Japanese, Korean, Latin, literary Chinese, Persian, Portuguese, Russian, Sanskrit, 
Spanish, Tatum, Tibetan, Thai, and Vietnamese, and many others, and many other languages. Apart from the diversity of languages available, which have you've just seen um, the, from the list, the degree also in allows multiple combinations. It's a flexible degree. It caters to individual students' language backgrounds. It also enables multiple pathways, including literary translation, linguistic, and intercultural training. It also offers research opportunity. We students can um, progress from the master coursework, master of translation to advanced master of translation, which includes a trans a thesis component, and as a pathway to PhD research. And we have had a students who um, um, took this uh, research opportunity and are now are current um, PhD students. And master of translation is also uh, compatible with the vertical degree. That means students can um, build the master of translation on their existing uh, bachelor of deg bachelor's degree and form that vertical double degree. So apart from, uh, so there are two options here. It is as a standalone degree or as an add-on um, uh, postgraduate degree. Career prospects, um, I already give you a, a, some ideas about where our current alumni are. Uh, our, uh, so the career prospects include, in, of course, in translation, but also in publishing, uh, project management, education, and diplo diplomacy, policy, public service, international organizations, multinationals, and NGOs. The professional outcomes include, in, include gaining highly developed analytical and written communication skills in English and a language of focus, which you need to succeed in professional translation. But not just that, it also equip you with intercultural competence and the transfer skills, those so-called soft skills, which employees look for and which prepare you for future jobs in a multilingual environment. So throughout this degree, you will be gaining skills, intercultural communication, creative thinking, and problem solving, evaluating and decision-making, ethical competence, research, uh, editing, etc. In that connection, I should also mention that today, earn your master of translation and the advanced advanced master of translation are professional degrees endorsed by the national accreditation authority for translators and interpreters for all languages offered at ANU this means that upon upon successful completion of the program students are eligible for the corresponding testing level subjected to the availability of the NATI certification tests for each language. And uh, our current endorsement uh, um, of the program is valid between 2018 and 2020. I should point this out because of the, uh, the requirement, the three year requirement, validation requirement for, um, uh, for, the, for endorsed degree It also means that, uh, that this means that uh, uh, as a professional degree, um, Master of Translation corresponds to the Certified Translator testing level and the Advanced Master of Translation corresponds to either the Certified Translator testing level or the Advanced Certified Translator testing level, depending on the type of thesis taken, undertaken. So now I'll give you, um, now I'm going to give you a basic structure of, uh, explain the basic structure of the Master of Translation. Master of Translation is a coursework degree composed of four components. 
comprised of four components. Introductory component, 24 credit points, means four courses. Research component, 24 credit points, four courses. Disciplinary component, 24 credit points, four courses. And electives, 24 credit points and equal four courses here. And we often have students um, use the electives to learn another language or to um, take their existing language level to an additional language to an, a higher level. So this is uh, uh, another, just another way of looking at uh, the, uh, the, the structure of the degree. It comprises four, compo it comprises four components. Um, the introductory components, research component, uh, disciplinary component and electives. If one, if a student is interested in the advanced master of translation, then instead of doing the 24 unit electives, the student will be doing a thesis. So the difference uh, between master of translation and the advanced, advanced master of translation lies here in the research component. It, it lies here in the thesis. And so the master of translation um, doesn't include a thesis, coursework only, um, and it includes 24 unit of electives. But master of uh, advanced master of the, uh, translation has a thesis component with 24 units. It's, it is expected to, um, to be between um, 15,000 to 20,000 words. And the students also have the options for the thesis. They have the options of um, write a translation and uh, exegesis or a critique of an existing translation. The length of degree, the four degrees, 94, uh, 96 units, um, two years, four time. Uh, the actual length of the degree really depend, depends on the background of the candidate. So I give it, here I'm going to give you a few different, case, different scenarios. For example, in Sarah's case, um, Sarah has a bachelor in languages, majoring in German and Indonesian. Um, and Sarah wants to have Indonesian as a, her language of focus for the degree, for the Master of Translation. And she receives an offer, um, uh, the, which is 96 units, two years, full time. And she's also eligible for claiming 24 units because of the um, major, because of her major, Ooh. major in Indonesian. Uh. And so her actual length of, uh, well, because um, she's eligible and she wants to claim that 24 units, the actual length of study is a, a year and a half, all coursework. Let's look at another scenario, Peter's case. Peter has a major in Spanish and um, he wants to focus on um, Spanish and do, does, uh, she wants, he wants to do Spanish and English translation and it offers two years and he's eligible for claiming 24 units. And he, Peter wants to claim that 24 units. So his actual length of study is a year and a half. So first year, he um, did coursework, then he has um, enough marks for the advanced master of translation. So he transferred to the, so he was successful successfully transferred to the master, advanced master of translation. Um, and also he found a supervisor who's willing to supervise uh, um, his thesis. So Peter's, in Peter's case, the actual length of study is a year and a half, one year coursework plus and half year um, thesis or four time study. 
A third case here scenario is Lee's um, case. Lee is an international student. He has a major in um, Japanese, Japanese language. Of, he wants to do two languages for his master of translation. Um, one is Japanese, the other is Chinese. And he is eligible to eligible for claiming 24 units, but he chose not to claim the 24 units. So his actual length of study is two years and all coursework. And he can here use uh, disciplinary courses and electives to complete uh, another additional language of focus. So who can um, uh, uh, claim, uh, uh, who are eligible for um, credit points? Um, if a student who has uh, um, had a following um, undergraduate degree, they may, they may be um, eligible for credit points. Um, this uh, is assessed the case by case, on a case by case basis. So th these cognate disciplines include applied linguistics, um, area studies, communication, languages, linguistics, literature, translating, interpreting, and others. Um, if you would like to find more about the eligibility and um, the, the, the different conditions for, uh, and, and uh, different conditions and the cognate disciplines, you can visit the um, website on the program and the courses. It gives you a very good um, overview and general information that uh, you initially need to get an idea of the program. Um, so, as Zhengda said, I'm in indigenous linguistics and the one language, an area of languages that we also teach. So at ANU we've got, as Zhengda pointed out, a great wealth of both languages and linguistics. So she listed a number of languages. We also have linguistics, applied linguistics, and we also have forensic linguistics, the relation of language and the law. Okay. Sorry, Jen, uh, we can't hear you very clearly. Okay, is this better? Yes. It's better? Okay. So yes. we have a number of um, academic centres a centre which works on Australian English, a centre for health communication, research on classical languages, a centre for digital humanities research, a humanities research centre. We've got very good resources for learning languages and we also try quite hard to work out exchanges and opportunities for people to travel uh, and work on languages elsewhere. A Master's of General and Applied Linguistics is not a professional qualification. However, it does enhance your skills in a number of directions. Above all, you learn about the structure and use of languages. You learn how to describe languages. You learn about how languages change, how they're learned, how children acquire them, how they're processed. And we also have a strong applied linguistics focus. So you learn how to apply this work in education, in the courts, and as Zheng Dao has pointed out, in translation. So as a result of this, this focus on language, this should, should enhance your communication skills, your writing, and your skills in new media, and if you choose in digital humanities. And again, as Zheng Dao pointed out, intercultural awareness is a key focus. So Zheng Dao has gone through the requirements to enter a master's. So basically you need a bachelor's degree or an international equivalent, and that takes you into the master's degree. The master's degree, as Zheng Dao has also said, you can get credit for previous work, up to a semester's work of, worth of credit for a bachelor degree in a similar discipline, and if you have an honours or graduate diploma, you can get up to a year's credit. In the master's programme, you do, if you've got no linguistics background, you do four introductory courses. 
And if you do have a linguistics background, these are probably the courses that you would get credit for. And then you do at least four more advanced linguistics courses across areas like theoretical linguistics, language learning, sociolinguistics, applied linguistics, forensic linguistics, or we offer a number of courses such as Japanese linguistics, Chinese linguistics, courses that relate to particular languages, including Australian indigenous languages. Then you'll do at least two research methods courses, which are on qualitative methods and on quantitative methods. And these equip you for doing research, both as a, if you choose to do a master's subthesis, or if you choose to go into pub the public service or into any area which needs research done. And you'll do at least two research project courses, normally relating to linguistics, but um, uh, linguistics, this could be linguistics and the law, it could be linguistics and education, it could be a range of courses. Um, and then you do, if you wish, up to four courses from the languages. And this is one of the things that makes our master's degree in linguistics different from most master's degrees, in that you do have the opportunity to hone your skills in a particular language or more than one language. And you can do up to four elective courses from across ANU. So this is where you could, for instance, take digital humanities, or as one of our students is currently doing, Aboriginal history, or you could take anthropology, or you could take statistics courses. You know, ANU has a great many courses on offer, which could be of interest to master's students. Um, the way you do it is you would norm, if you do, you would do a, the first year and the second year. If you're doing it full time, you would do coursework in both semesters. If you, would do, if you decided to do a master's thesis, then in the second year, in your first semester, you would do a thesis scaffolding course, and then you would complete your thesis in your final semester. So that's the coursework. If you choose to do a master's sub-thesis, this is basically original research on a topic that you are passionate about and that you can convince a supervisor also to be passionate about. And you're supported by this supervisor. Normally people would do it over two semesters part-time or if you're really dedicated, one semester full-time. The thesis result is combined with your coursework marks, um, marks and that can be used for entry into doctoral research. But it is also useful for other kinds of research jobs that your master's thesis convinces potential employers that you have the time management and research skills and intellectual ability to complete a thesis. To find supervisors, or the best place to look is ANU's researchers page and to see who is working on things that really interest you. And then you talk to them about your interests. I've just put up here a slide from one of our students, a former student, <coughs> who describes why she likes our course. And that's partly because our program is relatively small. So we're much more flexible but about allowing students to tailor assignments to their own interests. Following on from a master's degree, you might want to consider all the bachelor's. <coughs> and so ANU also offers that, that you can go on from your master's degree with an advanced thesis and become a PhD student or a master's of philosophy student. And again, I've put up here the kind of details about that, about the length of the thesis and the length of time. So a Master's of Philosophy is a shorter research degree. Sometimes you, you don't know whether they want to be a PhD, enter into that, and then transfer into the PhD. So, um, applying for PhDs, you need a minimum of a distinction of, of HPA, that's 
honors QA, uh, an honors degree, or a master's degree with a distinction in it. And again, you know, there's uh, plenty of information about that online. I've put here the 